Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation. We have log y with base x equals log x with base y. And we're going to be looking for solutions to this equation. First of all, we can go ahead and use change of base formula. The change of base formula works like this. If you have log a with base b, you can write it as log a over log b. And you can use pretty much any base here. It could be base 10, which we don't write, or it could be the natural logarithm, which you can write as ln a over ln b, or it can be any base. A lot of times I use ln because that is kind of convenient. You know, it's easy to differentiate, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and use base e natural log for this. So we can write the first one as ln y over ln x equals, and the second one as ln x over ln y. You know, there's a couple different ways to look at it. The first way that I want to look at it is First, obviously, we want to cross multiply ln y times ln y equals ln x times ln x. So here's the first way to look at it. I'm going to go ahead and move one of these to the front and make it an exponent because we have some properties of logs that are really cool. If you have a coefficient, you can basically go ahead and make it an exponent. So this becomes ln y to the power ln y equals ln x to the power ln x. So the property that I use here is basically something that looks like this. If you have k ln t, you can write this as ln t to the power k, and vice versa. So why is this useful? Because we have ln on both sides, and ln is an increasing function. Remember, it, its graph looks like this. So we can just totally forget about the ln and write this as y to the power ln y equals x to the power ln x. And I know the first reaction is y and x are the same thing. Yes, but that's not the end of the story. So one solution from here, the obvious one, is y equals x. Because if you replace y with x, you get the same thing. Great. Where does the other solution come from? And why is there another solution? So if you manipulate this expression a little bit, I'm going to manipulate the x side. So y to the power ln y equals, instead of x, let me write it first, I'm going to go ahead and change the x as x to the power 1, and I'm going to write it as x to the power negative 1 times negative 1. This is the same as x, right? And then I'm going to raise it to the power ln x. And I'm going to keep one of these negative 1s inside the parentheses, so write it like this. And then put the other negative 1 outside the parentheses and write it as negative 1 times ln x, but that's just negative ln x. In other words, if you multiply negative 1 times negative ln x, you get ln x, which is what we have here. So they check. Okay, but why is this useful? y to the power ln y. Let's go ahead and write it on the left-hand side so we can kind of see what we're setting this equal to. This is helpful because this negative 1 can be made an exponent again, like before. So we can write it as x to the power negative 1 to the power ln x to the power negative 1. And that's awesome, because now this gives us another equality where y equals x to the power negative 1, or 1 over x. So to keep a long story short, y to the power ln y equals x to the power ln x has two solutions. One of them is y equals x. The other one is y equals 1 over x. And I think I think we have done a similar problem before with a and 3. Uh, if I find it, I'll share the link down below. Okay, so we got two solutions, y equals x and y equals 1 over x. But there's a couple of things we need to look at. And oh, I was going to show you the second way to approach it. So this is the first method. And then the second method after cross multiplication you get this, and then you can do the following. I mean, ln y times ln y. If you multiply something by itself, you get that thing squared, don't you? So this is ln y squared, and this is ln x squared. So we have a squared equals b squared. What does that remind you? Put everything on the same side, and if you said difference of two squares, you got it right. So we have difference of two squares, and we can factor it 
ln y plus ln x times ln y minus ln x equals zero. From here we get two solutions, ln y plus ln x equals zero, which implies ln y equals negative ln x, which implies ln x to the power negative one, which implies y equals x to the power negative one, which can be written as y equals one over x. Awesome. The second one gives us ln y equals ln x, as you can see here. And that means y equals x. And remember, we found these solutions before. So that's just another way to approach the problem. And I'm pretty sure there's other ways to do it too. Anyways, so we got two results, but there are some limitations because of the domain of the log function. So remember, the original equation gave us log y with base x and vice versa. So x and y are both bases, which means x, y have to be positive and x, y, which means both of them, right, cannot equal 1. So if you have the base of a log, it can't be negative, it can't be 0, it can't be 1. It can be anything else. It can be 1 half, it could be square root of 2, anything crazy you may think of. So 1 comma 1 is not a solution. Even though y equals x is a branch, you're going to see in the graph, when I show you the graph, you're going to notice that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll just finish up. So the graph of log y with base x, and I apologize for the other video that I really rushed through the graph, didn't give you much time or didn't give a lot of explanations. Anyways, so hopefully we'll make up. We have log y with base x equals log x with base y. And why did I uh, plot 1 comma 1 as a point? Because Desmos does not do open dots. And there's probably a good reason behind it. You know how sometimes some graphs don't resolve completely because there are too many data points and, you know, it just doesn't work. So sometimes our options are limited. But anyways, that's why I wanted to emphasize the fact that 1 comma 1 is an open dot, which means it is not a solution. So 1 comma 1, I already have it there. I know I'm writing it again. Not a solution. But I want to show you the emphasize it because it does, it's not visible. If I just graph it, you're, you're not going to see that 1 comma 1 is not a solution. Anyways, so we got two pieces here. Remember what the solutions are. Y equals X, which is our diagonal. I just forgot the name of it. The line that makes up the main diagonal, and y equals 1 over x, the hyperbola. And those are all the solutions, but also we have some requirements. x and y are both positive, and they're different from 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.